Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and we are back with the 3060 Ti again. Um, this time we're actually going to be doing some modifications to it. Um, so yeah, this first round of modifications, we're just going to be replacing all the 5 milliohm shunt resistors on the card with these uh, 3 milliohm shunt resistors that I have. And uh, that should lead to a roughly 66% increase in the card's power limit. Um, it's been sitting on the hot plate for a while now, and the hot plate is set to 125 degrees Celsius. Um, the idea behind having a hot plate like this uh, when soldering is that uh, it allows you to basically bring up the, temp the, the PCB temperature significantly above room temperature. And because, like, and that basically makes it much easier to flow solder um, around the board when, when doing any kind of soldering. So at this point, the PCB is up to around... Uh, you know, 70 something degrees. So it should be much, much easier to work on than if it was at uh, room temperature. Um, and also you might be like, but isn't the hot plate set to 125 degrees? Well, yes, but the thermal transfer between the PCB and the hot plate isn't perfect. The PCB has a decent amount of surface area, so it'll actually lose a lot of the heat that's put into it. Um, yeah, so we're, we're just gonna desolder the existing shunt resistors and we are doing all of them. Uh, so that means these two over here, so one for the 6-pin, one for the 8-pin. Uh, we're also doing the ones on the back of the board, and I've now realized that there's no way I can flip this over, uh, because it's very hot. Um, I mean, there is ways, but I'm, like, I'm not about to just grab the card, because that's gonna hurt. There we go. Luckily, plastic bits don't have a lot of, you know thermal conductivity, so those are relatively okay to touch, but metal parts are... J that, that's how you get burns. <laughs> so that's... Uh, yeah, and th this is the other shunt we'll be replacing, and also this one. And I think... Well, we'll do the ones on the front first, because those are easier, and then we're going to do the ones on the back. And I'm not going to be using the mic while, while doing this, so... Yeah, because the mic gets in the way. Um, I'm just going to flip it over again. And that is very unpleasant. Um, here we go. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So I was thinking about doing that with hot air, and I think the hot air might have been easier. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that's one 5 milliohm shunt resistor off. Um, now we need to do this one. I think I'll try this next one with hot air, because it's kind of... On the back it'll be a lot easier, but there's a lot of tall components on this side of the card, and they really do get in the way quite a bit.
off. And that's another one off. The hot air is just set to 350 degrees Celsius. And with the board preheated, this is so easy to do. <laughs> so yeah, the preheating is a really good idea. Um, now we just need to get the uh, 3 milliohm shunt resistors on and uh, then do the back of the board. A little bit too much solder on that, but eh, I'll take it. <laughs> This is like the worst soldering iron tip for this job. It's like a really fine conical one. It's just not, like I can't get the angle right. Well, it's not coming off, but it's definitely very blobby, so not great in terms of soldering quality, but eh, it'll work.
Okay, that one looks good. Yeah, this one's in a much easier to reach spot, so... That one I'm actually relatively pleased with. Well, that one came off super easy, so there's like no thermal mass in that area. Yeah, also pleased with that one. The ones on the front were, like, there's a lot more solder than there needs to be there, but they'll work. Um, yeah, that's all there is to it. That's that's a shunt mod. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't really get easier. <laughs> These are very large components. Um, the main issue with it is having enough heat. So, like, having a hot plate, super helpful. If you don't have a hot plate, uh, you can just actually preheat the board with a hair dryer. I like to use a hairdryer and not a heat gun because with a heat gun you can potentially cook capacitors and that kind of thing. Whereas with a heat, like with a hairdryer you really can't. And say my hairdryer will actually spit out 60 degrees Celsius air. So just getting the board above from like 20 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius helps a lot already. Um, obviously with the hot plate I can have it set to 125 and the board's going to be sitting at like 80 to 100 degrees and that makes life very easy. But um, yeah, honestly, you can do this with just two soldering irons. That, I'd say, is like the bare minimum requirement to be able to do a shunt mod is uh, two soldering irons. Not one, because with one soldering iron, you're going to have to like get both tabs at the same time, and it's going to be super fiddly, and I've decided that I want to clean this up. That like The, the solder there just doesn't look very nice, so I'm going to put a little bit of flux on it, and I'm just going to go both soldering irons on top of it at the same time and clean that up a bit, because, yeah. Like, I want it to look, you know, not factory condition, but th this is awful. <laughs> so we'll fix it. Still blobby, but now it's like nice and shiny instead of all matte and, and sort of spiky looking. There we go, much nicer on both of them. Um, so now it just needs to get washed off with a bit of isopropyl alcohol, and then I can reassemble the card and run it, which I won't be showing on video, unfortunately, because uh, it'll take a while to, to do, and yeah, I don't really, like, it's gonna be super boring, because this card isn't super easy to put back together, and so, yeah, that's it for, for just replacing the shunt resistors on this 3060 Ti. Um, this is sort of the most basic modification that I'm going to be doing to it. I also want to get voltage control for vCore, voltage control for memory. Um, we'll probably end up adding extra capacitors to it, but that'll be after I get the oscilloscope hooked up. And I'm doing this first because I want to see what the voltage regulation looks like when the card isn't constantly power throttling. 
um, but under its own stock power configuration, on, under its own stock uh, power delivery setup. And then we're going to start like messing around with the oscilloscope measurements and, and trying to improve on the uh, voltage regulation relative to what the card started out with. And hopefully that'll get it to clock a little bit higher, but this initially should actually just boost the performance. While fun fact about heart like power limit mods like this is they can actually reduce the amount of core clock offset you can apply because when the card isn't constantly power throttling, it, the power, like the core clock will on its own increase. And so if you have an offset of say plus 90 being uh, stable, after a power limit mod, especially a drastic one like this, where we've gone up in power limit by 66%, um, roughly 66%, um, you can find that actually your maximum core clock, like your peak core, like your core clock offset goes down, but the average clock is so much higher because the card isn't constantly power throttling that the performance is actually better, even though it looks like you can't raise the clock as high, and that's just because of you not bouncing off the power limit all the time. So, yeah, that is... That is it for the video. Um, I'll, I don't know, report the results of this modification down in the description or something. Um, and uh, yeah, so thank you for watching. Thank you to my patrons for funding purchases like this 3060 Ti, as well as a lot of the equipment that I use. Um, and uh, if you like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the descri description below. There's also the HOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Uh, both of those help out immensely with running the channel, so it would be much appreciated if you check out the, the Patreon and, and the Teespring. And uh, yeah, that's it for the video, so thank you for watching, and... Goodbye.